Hello and welcome back. It's Sherry with Heart and Soul Full in the studio today. And I'm so excited about um, doing this video. It's eye candy to me. I just had so much fun doing this, I couldn't wait. Um, so if you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. I hope if you like this video or feel inspired that you will give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe so you don't miss a thing. I'm working today on a project that has kind of been an ongoing thing here. So I will put a link to this series so that you can watch it from the beginning. Um, and that way you'll kind of see all the other ideas. And I tend to kind of um, reference previous videos uh, because I'm just in my head imagining that someone's doing this journey right along with me. So you might want to go back and watch the beginning, but I think this will still be fun. It might be just a good teaser for you um, to see if you want to uh, watch the whole thing. So I've been working on a challenge for myself and I, the last couple of uh, journals that I did were using paper packs, pre-made paper packs. And that was kind of, you know, easy to do in a way, not as much of a challenge as trying to come up with it on your own. So for this one, I decided I'm going to take all that recycled book page paper that I have and not allow myself to use any decorative paper packs. I can only use the, the recycled book pages. So that's what I am working on. And uh, I also have a series going where I am working on uh, ice resin product because I make jewelry and I'm trying to marry my jewelry uh, products and techniques with paper craft. And so this, this particular video also crosses over to that um, series. So I'm gonna put it in both places. So I will put the link to that one also in case you know your interest is peaked a little bit and you kind of wanna check out what I'm talking about. I'm gonna also kind of touch base uh, with some of those kind of things at the end of this video too, just, just to kind of do some little updates. So um, how I came up with this idea for today was the last video that I did was making a, a paper fan um, journal card. And this whole project, like I said, is from recycled book pages. And I had a request to do a stacked envelope journal tutorial again. So I decided that I would just kind of do a mashup and I would use the recycled book page for this particular format. So that's kind of what we're working on here. Uh, you can have your own kind of theme, color palette, you know, uh, style, whatever and it'll still translate to all the ideas that are in this one. So I hope you'll you'll watch the whole thing and check it out because there's some fun stuff. So uh, basically the last video was making this fan. And when I did that, I ended up with all these little pie-shaped slivers, you know, from cutting off to make the fan, the fan blades. So I had a whole little pile of those and I happened to be working on um, making buttons and I use my uh, ice resin for that also and I had a little left over and I don't like to throw anything away so I had all these scraps sitting on my table and a little bit of ice resin left and I thought what can I do I need to do something with those with those uh, slivers and I think I had an idea so I'm gonna make beads uh, I had mentioned that I wanted to do some little tassel -y things on the bottom of my fan. You know, there's like a little, um, this was the other one I did. There's like this little brad hole here at the bottom. And so I wanted to make some little tassel -y things. I don't think I'm going to end up using these just because I don't think it'll fit nicely into my envelope uh, then. But it was kind of how I, why the idea popped in my head. So I had that. And if you have never used ice resin before, I'm gonna link the video uh, that I show how to make resin paper because it covers all the just basic how to mix it and that kind of thing. So you can watch that. It's, it's equal parts. I buy these big bottles that you can buy just a little syringe type that's kind of a one use thing. Um, they sell those at Michael's, any kind of craft place who knows where, if you see any ice resin products, they have it. You can also buy it online. I'll put the link to their website and then you can you can find it. It's, it's sold by Ranger. Um, so 
that's the product that I'm using. I had somebody comment to me that they were intimidated to use uh, ice resin. They were scared. Don't be afraid. It's really easy. You, I wear gloves. The woman that created that, she actually does it and doesn't wear gloves. It's really sticky, so is why I wear gloves. But you can just um, keep a paper towel soaked in regular old alcohol, and that will keep your fingers clean in whatever else you're working on while you're working with it. So don't be afraid to try it. If you really, really, really don't want to use ice resin, then um, you can use like a gloss Mod Podge. Um, this one I have is in matte finish, but you can find it in gloss. I would do several coats then probably um, just to get the hardening maybe that you want. Um, the ice resin will be much better, but like I said, if you really don't want to use it, just get the gloss one. Um, and you can use that or you can even seal it with like a gloss polyurethane or something like that if you'd rather So those things could work for you, too. So um, What I did though is I had imagine this has a little resin I just used a little throwaway paintbrush and I just had a little bit left in the bottom and I didn't have a plan for it And I I have plenty of just regular resin paper right now So I went ahead and thought I got to just use this up on these things so I took um, a bamboo skewer uh, like this and just took my little strip of paper. And I mean, I was working with this. My, my resin was already getting thick, so I didn't really have a lot of working time. I took my fine line applicator. I'll put the link in the bottom. I get these at Amazon. And then I just started to wrap my, what's going to be my bead from the, from the wide end of your little pie shape. You want it to be pie shape because that's gonna be what gives you all the color variation. And the width of the bottom of your uh, sliver is gonna determine the length of your bead. So you can do, um, I, I'll show you the finished ones, but you can do different lengths. So you just start wrapping. I don't put any glue on it initially because I don't want it to stick to my bamboo skewer I want to be able to slide it off at the end so I'm going to just put a little dab there now and as I roll that glue is just going to kind of slide up uh, depending on how much I put so I still have glue going up 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 my paper and I don't really need it to go the whole way because this is just kind of keeping me from having it um, go all over the place so I can just keep, even though I have no glue on it now, I'm just gonna keep rolling till I get towards the top. And depending on, you know, your color of your paper, that's gonna be the, the variation in the color of your bead. And I'm gonna go with glue all the way to the very end and do the same thing. And it's getting on the top of the paper too, but it's Mod Podge, so you use this as a sealer. Any kind of glue that dries clear would work. Okay, so that's it. I have two beads on there. Now these I had just kind of, the paper wasn't really colorful, but if you see my tray that was full of beads, get this out of the way, you can see, where's my lid? You want to keep your lid on your fine line so it doesn't dry out, and I mention this all the time. If you haven't used it in a few days, soak it in warm water and blow through the you know, take the cap off and just soak this whole thing. And then I let it rinse as much, you know, till you think it's pretty clean and you're not gonna see water coming out here yet. I then blow on that end once I've gotten all the glue out and just keep doing that until uh, your water is coming out really clear and then you know it's it's good to go. But it'll get, this little pin goes inside here and so it'll get over time it'll get dried out even if you, if you haven't been using it so once you have your skewers ready then just straddle them on a cookie sheet i use a cookie sheet to uh, let my buttons or whatever cure uh, because it needs to set up for 24 hours and then you're good to go so i had the first i did two days of this and the first day I was using these bigger skewers and then I grabbed another skewer the next day to do them and it was smaller around, which is fine. It just, it would give me a smaller hole, but the problem was it wouldn't fit on my, on my uh, 
cookie sheet. And I'm only showing you that because if you find out your skewers are this smaller size and it won't straddle something, you can do two things. You can either get like a cardboard box and make like a roti, you know, cut little uh, notches in the end. So you'll stick those in there and it'll just kind of straddle that while it dries, kind of like a rotisserie thing. Or in my case, I just wanted to make my skewer longer. So I, I just took one of my beads to the tapered end and then grabbed another skewer and cut it. And those two taper ends together, if you use that bead, it will hold them, it will hold them together and then it'll, it'll straddle. So that's just a little, a little MacGyver thing I had to come up with. The other thing I wanted to show you is um, I just did my beads and used a, my paintbrush wherever it went here somewhere. And I would just paint it on, you know, you can just roll the thing around. And you want to get to the, e to the edge, but you don't want it to go inside because you don't want it stuck to your skewer. You want to be able to get it off afterwards, right? So you just be careful, get all the way to the edge without going onto the bamboo. And then the other thing is, I don't know if you can see on this one, it looks pregnant. It's because I had too much resin, or it's actually this one is worse. You can see that it's it's smaller on this side and there's a big belly on this side. It's because I had too much resin and so when I straddled it, just gravity kind of wanted to make a little drop there. So for what I'm doing, it's not a big deal, but if you were making beads and wanting to sell them or putting them in something a necklace or something that you were really gonna see that, you wouldn't wanna use that one. You can actually sand that off and then put resin on it again and, and fix it. So it's not, you haven't wasted it, but um, that's just, I wanted to show that. So you wanna be careful of the amount of resin that you put on it. So because I started thinking, um, you know, embellishments for my book, I also started thinking of jewelry and other things I could do with some scraps. So I wanted to show where that kind of led me um, because I tend to do that, and I'm sure you do too, is whenever you're making something, you'll do one thing and it'll give you an idea for something else. So I had this idea then, how cute to make a, just a colorful bracelet with those. So I, I um, took a cup, just some leather, and you can get, I buy my leather in bulk from Leathercraft, uh, yeah, Leathercraft, Leather Cord, Leather Cord USA. I'll put the link to that too. If you do a lot of something and you want to buy it in bulk, it's like half the price of buying it at um, like Michael's or a craft store or something like our jewelry supply, that kind of thing. So this one's two millimeter. I did this one for the bracelet. Um, I also carry it in uh, one and a half millimeter and then one millimeter I used is what I used for my little pencil. So you can buy, you know, smaller amounts at craft stores, any place that sells jewelry, that kind of thing. So I use the two millimeter because I have a nice big hole. Um, you know, it's the size of the skewer and uh, just, you know, strung them on there. And then these little closures, <clears throat> I actually make these, this was copper wire. And you know, it, if you see something, um, I have an Etsy shop and I have a jewelry website. I'll put the links to those two. I, I don't normally like sell the parts and pieces, um, but if you're just, you wanna do something a one time or whatever um, and wanna purchase something, just maybe ask me and I can figure it out and put it on Etsy. I, I didn't sell, um, <clears throat> I didn't sell internationally before I started doing uh, this YouTube, but I had a request. So my Etsy shop makes it really easy to do international. So. If you see something on my jewelry website, I can move it over to my Etsy shop so that you can purchase it. Um, but I have started maybe putting a couple of jewelry items there, but that's where I put all my knitting and uh, that kind of thing. So if you ever see me do something and say, are you gonna sell that or those parts or whatever, just put me put me a note in the comments and I'll, I'll try to do that. So it's just made a cute little bracelet and um, you can put spacer beads in between these you know, or a focal point something, and then, or do a wrap one, whatever. And this little thing, I know you'll ask, this little thing is a thing that I make. This one's just out of bronze. Um, it's just a, a, a bracelet helper. And I include these with every um, bracelet order. So that's just a, a little tool that I make. After the bracelet, then I had this other idea um, to do like, 
it would have been fun to do uh, do them on a pencil so then you have a really big hole. And when I did this, I wasn't sure they were gonna stay on the pencil or not. I mean, I thought it was a cute idea to do a decorative pencil. So I just did them right onto my pencil and I straddled my pencil across the corner of my cookie sheet so they could dry. And when I did this, I had them butted all next to each other because I wanted to see if I could actually get, um, resin can be like a glue, if I could get them to be like one long tube and get that whole tube off of my pencil. I did them a little tight at the top and so it didn't work. If you if you don't do them too tight when you're wrapping them around, like this one, these are this one's pretty tight, you can see, but this one's loose. If you do them nice and loose like that, they're harder to put the resin on because they want to spin, but it, it still works. You'll just go this direction instead. But the nice thing is you can get them all glued together and then pull the whole thing off and then attach it to like the top of a barrette and you know make a, a cute decorative barrette. So I might do some where I do like uh, rows of them and do like three rows or something and make a cute barrette. So it was just another idea of something to do with a paper craft marrying my uh, ice resin. So I might do some more different things like that. And then I just use some of the smaller ones that from the bamboo skewer and then some of the leather just wrapped it and tied on some little copper beads with uh, with these. So I thought that was just cute to attach to my, my journal. And then I thought of another thing to do some different scraps. Um, if I've, sh I've shown you this before, um, on my on my mixed media papers that I've been making, I've been doodling and making circles, and I'll I'll show these um, individually at the end just because there's some fun ones. When I make these circles with the little swirls in them, sometimes I've been putting them too close together. You know, they'll be like this close together, so I can only use the little button that I cut out. I've now consciously tried to make them a little further apart so that I can make these big donuts out of them. And I'll, sh I'll show you how I do that. But I'm, I made these little, um, these would be the button that I do with this paper punch. And it just takes that little swirl part out. But then I can make a donut with that if I use then the next size bigger. This is a one inch. And I'll show you how I do that real quick and what I ended up doing with it. So this is one of the papers that I am just haven't gotten completely. And I, I can make donuts out of these. So I'm going to actually need to, I know already that I, I can't get close enough to that center. So I'm going to just kind of cut myself a strip closer so that I can get my punch in there and then hold it upside down. So I'm still a little off, but that would still be a cute one. Just, you know, I'm not gonna be too particular. So that just made a cute little button. And then I'm gonna do the, another one. So I have those two. So these I can use, where's my book? I can punch a little hole in the center with my three millimeter punch. And if you've watched the previous video, I was making these little coin envelope type closures. You can use those little buttons and make those. How cute is that? So you want to do um, like resin on both sides, two coats of resin. So what I've done on these is I took my button and I actually would have glued this to another piece of paper. Um, so like I can glue these two together or I can take a totally different paper and glue these together and it's just a reversible then thing. So the, if I use these two, then I could make one of those coin envelopes. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to use my glue and just glue a different circle that I made for a back because in this case it wouldn't be a big deal because if I'm using them for those, you're not going to see the backside anyway. But I don't mind that it's two thicknesses because it's going to make my little button sturdier. So these I went ahead and already have done that. I've done one side. And I think actually, 
So I would just kind of let, let that dry. When I did all of these, I just glued a decorative sheet before I cut it out. I would just glue it to another decorative sheet and then I already have the back side. So that's probably the easier thing to do. So glue two decorative pieces together and then punch out your center hole and then it would already be two-sided, okay? And then you're gonna do the bigger punch. So we're gonna pretend again that I've already glued it to another, another pretty sheet. And then you punch out your donut shape. Now, that's why, that one is why I need these to be far enough apart that I can get two out of them and not waste, not waste them. If my, if my two decorative circles were too close together, I wouldn't be able to get that bigger circle. So keep that in mind when you're doing your, uh, your little decorative circles on your paper that you keep them far enough apart. So now I have these rings. So what prompted me two things is seeing this pretty ring, I thought, oh, these could be earrings. See, I've done the decorative paper on the other side. These could be earrings or a necklace. You know, you just add to them and they're reversible then too. So I put one coat of resin on one side and I just painted it on with my paintbrush and then I'll flip it over now and I'll do the other side. And for what I want to use, that might be enough. If I want it to be really sturdy, like a you know piece of jewelry, I would do more layers of resin. And what triggered me to think of that was uh, like this necklace is one of my favorite necklaces. And it was with these, this is a carnelian ring, or this one's orange jade, but you can get them in semi-precious stones. And I do them as these kind of long tassel -y necklaces. So that's kind of what gave me the idea. It would be fun to make some brightly colored rings um, to do my jewelry. I just thought that would be pretty. So to do that, I will probably make, you know, do maybe three coats on each side, and it's gonna give me a substantial ring uh, that I can use. So that was one idea. And then I thought how cute to make those into buckles. And this could still also be jewelry, but I thought for my journaling, it would be a really as a cute closure. So I wanted to show you how I did that too. So I took um, the circle, and you'll notice on this one, one side's narrower than the top. You don't even have to have your, your smaller circle centered in the big circle. You can have it offset. So that's kind of the nice thing when I do these. I take that little plastic thing off because I want to see right where my... Um, let me find another one with a circle on it. That way I can see right where I'm going. So I can offset, they don't have to be centered. See that one? I couldn't center my little um, swirly thing because my paper is too close to the edge. But I can off-center it and that would be cute too. So just kind of keep in mind your placement when you're when you're making your papers. So to make the butt the buckle, it's basically just one of these circles. And then to make the little cross piece, um, what I did, and I could actually even use that little strip that I had if I wanted. And I'll just cut that off so we don't waste anything. And since I know the inside of my circle is my little punch, all I have to do to get that rounded angle is put that little sliver in my circle punch in the middle and then cut it. And now it has that curve. You don't see it so much to the naked eye. Is that the right piece or did I get, I grabbed the wrong one. I don't see which piece was the, no, it was that one. So it should fit perfectly inside that other circle because they were made with the same punch. So that's all you have to do. So then just line it up whatever you know how whatever direction you want your buckle to look and just let it sit there and these i didn't even glue them in or anything because it's really just kind of floating in between my resin my resin acted as glue for that so i don't have any kind of overlap it's just totally flush with the edges and this one too and i don't know this one you can even i don't know if you can see it in there but I, I can see a little clear resin in between that, that and that. 
because it, it just floated in between there and acted as glue. So that's just a simple way to make buckles too. So I'll do more coats, like I said, on these and then maybe show them to you at the end of another video someday when they're finished or put them on my book and you'll see. So some just some little ideas. You can make little donut things that are jewelry or buckles and little buttons that could be buttons or I'm going to punch a little hole in the middle and there'll be closures for those uh, coin envelopes. So that was just some more ideas for um, scraps. Now, at the end of my... Um, at the end of videos, sometimes I will just kind of throw in a few more little outtakes, we'll call them. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Don't throw away your scraps. So I keep this little box um, and I'm talking, you know, next to my guillotine paper cutter, I'll end up with stuff just like that, right? These are so colorful and pretty. I already know what I'm gonna do with these. These are gonna get used. So don't throw anything away. Um, because we're gonna stay with the theme of your book that you're making, but we're gonna use, I've got some yarn in here that just happened to go with the colors um, that I was using the other night, and I've got embroidery thread for my slow stitching. There's a little piece of the leather that I cut off on my pencil that I've thrown in here. Some of my sari ribbon, which this could get, this is big enough that I actually could get used for a lot of things, but I just went ahead and threw everything in here. Big pieces, little pieces, garbage. It's just the garbage. And we're gonna use that, so don't throw away your scraps. Um, the other thing uh, is even stuff like this. You know, I had made a bunch of button, a bunch of those uh, donuts, and so I was able to cut this in a nice still strip. And this is going to be a cute belly band or something. You know, it's just part of it. So don't throw anything away. These papers take a long time to make. I mean, they're fun. I enjoy it, but um, I just love all this color. I don't want to throw anything away. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to find. I, I'm going to see if at the end of this book, I will have um, no colored paper going into the garbage. Now, this is just I, a little more eye candy. I've been doodling on these. I still want to do some slow stitching, but I just thought I'd show. These are the pens that I showed in the last video um, that are just these little metallic, metallic ones that I'm using. And I don't have my little, where is my pen thing? That way I can just kind of show you. Um, if you didn't watch the last video, just little brands. I'm just using for my gold. I'm using these Uniball Signo you, Broad. You can buy these individually at Michael's or in a three-pack of, of silver, gold, and white. At, uh, sells them, uh, Walmart sells them like that. And then I got a couple of other. Um, these are those Jelly Roll Metallics uh, that I bought individually in the art section at Michael's, and I love these. I just got three colors that I thought went with my book. And then for my outlining of stencils, I've been using this Micron 01 Pigma. And it's, um, you can get these at both Michaels and Walmart too. So these are the pins I've just been playing around with, with my stencils and just having so much fun. But I thought I would just show you some more that I did last night. These are uh, just a word stencil that I have that I've been using. And it's kind of, where'd it go? Um, the, the words on that one aren't even smooth edged. They're kind of grungy ones, you know, and they're a stencil, but when you're coloring them in with a pen, you fill in so it didn't look like a stencil and you can make the edges as smooth as you want. So that was just um, a mini word stencil. And this one's from the craftersworkshop.com. So I'll put the link to those two. But just the color, I just love it. That, just that little shimmer kind of reminds me of um, foiling, you know, if you do any kind of foiling or anything, and it's just a, an easy way. It's probably slower than doing something like that, but I just enjoy doing something with my hands at night when the TV's on kind of thing, but just some different ones, the three colors, and this one I ended up makes more like a, a kind of a doily looking thing, and just more, just showing you little teasers, love. That one I had. I still want to do some stamping in the word stamps and things on some collaging and stuff with some uh, decoupage. This was a feather stamp that I, or a stencil that I have too. And I think I, all, I think I got all of these at the same time from that crafters workshop. But they all kind of just go with my little boho bohemian theme. Um, this one's more finished. It's got some currency on there that I showed in another video. Uh, and then some of these I wanted to show too. These, I needed to make more papers because I was using up so many. Um, and I was just getting down to fewer and fewer. So 
the other day I started making more um, colors and when you when you start out with just throwing color on there sometimes I'll get some colors that I just don't even think look good together and I'm thinking gosh maybe I'm not as doing this as good as I did the first time you know and I started questioning myself but then I realized once you start adding even just those little swirly things you know to it you bring in other colors or you know try to make them relate back to each other and these texture stamps and then do my little gold pen it made a huge difference just doing that one more little step so if you're doing your first step and this has that texture stencil on it too if you if you're just doing that first step and you're thinking you're not doing a very good job keep going because you're just going to keep adding until you start liking it and these have a lot more to go but i just wanted to show so that you don't um, kind of second guess yourself or get discouraged if you're not liking a paper you'll just keep adding to it and and trust me it'll get it'll get to where you love them all so that's just my little bit of eye candy and then um, buttons if you if you have been uh, following me for a while you'll know that i also make buttons i have them in various stages these um i've now packaged and there these are already listed on my um on my etsy shop so you can find these there uh, i've got a bunch uh these i need to get listed these i need to get carded and listed but i've just been having fun kind of using different materials to do those uh, they're all kind of coming along i did want to point out um, i know a couple of people i think are actually trying this with me and if you're to the point where you're getting you know close to finished some people are doing them with where you drill holes in there and that's fine i use mine for neck warmers and so um I, I like to do the shank style and I have uh, videos just on buttons so you can see exactly how I do these but I wanted to point out a couple things once I have my shank on and I've done that coat um, sometimes I need to go back and do a final final coat on the top so I have just used this with some packing tape tape down so that they won't stick because this is just paper um, and made a hole so that my shank fits in there and it because you want it to sit flat it's kind of tricky to do that and I haven't decided for myself uh, if I in a perfect world I guess I would have my button completely completely finished before I put the shank on that way I don't have to go back and do anything here and I've kind of done it both ways um, sometimes what will happen is if you don't let your button cure for three four five days you th you can touch it and you think it's good but i've been laying them on these mats to dry and this mat has a texture to it if it's not completely cured that texture can transfer even to the tiniest spot and you have to do another coat if you can avoid that um, and one thing that I think you can is instead of laying it on your mat, your craft mat, to do the shank step, go ahead and put packing tape on your cookie sheet so that it, and don't use a craft mat. That way, any resin that you, that spills over is like this. It'll spill onto here, but it's on this tape. But the tape doesn't have a texture. So if I've laid it on tape, imagine this is on a cookie sheet because I want it to be perfectly flat. My chances of having nothing happen to that top are better. So you might try that um, for your very last, if you're gonna put a shank on it. If you're doing where you're drilling holes, you don't have to worry about that. Sometimes what'll happen, like in this case, I went it back and I tried to make these all have a last coat. If you don't get enough, you're not gonna be able to see this, but if you don't get enough resin on that last coat, you get teeny tiny bubbles that you can't even see, but I can feel them. I can tell that this is not perfectly smooth. Now I need to do another coat. At the same time, it wasn't sitting perfectly flat and it puddled over underneath to this side. Now I can fix this. I just file this off, but I've now created two more steps for myself. So, you know, it's kind of a learning curve here. So I what my point is, if you can avoid this doing this last step where it's on this pad, um, I would try to do that. So my next ones, I'm going to make sure that my tops are perfect 
before I try to put my shank on. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. I get impatient and want it just to be finished. But I think I'm better off to make sure the top's done, done, done. Let it cure for a week if I have to. And then when I turn it upside down, turn it upside down onto packing tape um, so that my chances of getting this shank put on and that's a final coat and I'm done. So that's gonna be my next, my goal for my next batch. I still have this whole tray that I'm working on too. I've got some with the, you know, the vintage wallpaper. They're starting to come along. I haven't done anything to the backside yet, but like I said, I wanna make sure my edges and everything's perfect uh, before I put the shank on. These were ones I had shown before. These are with crushed, um, semi-precious crushed stones that I use in my jewelry. And then I thought, well, I might make a button out of those. So they're all kind of coming along. Again, these were with some rusty screen, um, some cork, just different ones. These are kind of like the uh, mixed media, the painting that I've been doing. I kind of did some on the top of buttons. And that was the actually, as I was doing these um, buckles and buttons and things, uh, that made me think of I could do some buttons with my mixed media paper um, and that would be really pretty too just to leave that leave that center dot in there and have that be a button so I have so many ideas and just wish I had more hours in the day but if you uh, if you liked all of this any of this and feel inspired um, let me know, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions at all, I'm gonna to try to remember to put all the links in there. If I forget any, let me know in the comments and then I'll add them into the description. Um, so I hope you had a, a, got a little few tidbits out of this and go enjoy the rest of your day now. Go make something, bye.